Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I am back and it is time for some pro StarCraft 2 action. The best of the best is what we have here. On the map Death Aura, we have got in the bottom right hand side of the map, it is Dragon Phoenix Gaming's Cure. And in the top left hand side of the map, playing for Afrika StarCraft 2. It is Sue. Sue, the monster, one of uh, one of the guys that uh, was around and really good when I first got into StarCraft 2. And so it's good to see that he's still doing really well. Uh, I believe, unfortunately, we are going to be losing Sue at some point in the future because he's going to have to go do his mandatory mandatory service like all uh, Korean men have to do at some point. So, uh... When there's a Sioux game out, I'm probably going to make a point to try and cast it. And then, of course, I'm just a giant Cure fanboy as well. I still think even after... I, I st it is nice to see that he made it to a GSL Finals, but I still feel like some people might sleep on Cure a little bit. After, like, before his GSL Finals, I'd say people sleep, like, underestimate Cure way too much. Now that he's made the Finals, he really has proven himself. But uh, this guy is no way done as far as uh, good StarCraft 2 results, I feel. So, Cure, Sue, a Terran versus Zerg. Ladies and gentlemen, back casting some pro StarCraft 2. We could hit 100 likes on this video. That would be amazing. I get the feeling that this is going to be an epic TVZ. And so, show uh, your love for pro StarCraft by hitting that like button. Now, as far as the builds go, it is the usual openings, which is good. It gives me a little bit of time to ramble, <laughs> ramble on a little bit, just while things heat on up. So we take a look. Kira's going for the Reaper, going for the Marine after the Reaper, then gets up his factory, all that, all that good stuff. Kira didn't SCV scout. This is why you generally go for the Marine if you don't SCV scout, because for all you know, there could be a few cheeky lings out on the map. And that's why you go for the Marine, partially to deny scouting, partially to defend against any lings that could be coming your way. Now the Reaper for Cure is going to come on in, start bullying Sue a little bit. And then is probably just going to, uh... It's going to get shooed away by that Queen when she pops out, and there she is. Looks like, uh, the Reaper does get one Zergling, tosses down a grenade, but is very low on HP, so won't get that Creep Tumor, won't get the Ling. Sue throws up that third hatchery, has that on the way now. Usual timing for a Zerg these days. We have got Kier gonna start making his Hellions, making the extra Marine. You generally make two Marines to my knowledge in order to try and uh, defend against the Overlords, which would come in and get some critical scouting. Uh, if the Zerg goes for like an Overseer or something, you obviously know they've got a Lair, or if they get Overlord speed, you can't really do much to deny the scouting. But otherwise, Having a couple of marines goes a long way to shutting down Overlord scouting that could be popping in to see, try and see something like an armory, like a third CC, like a fusion core. And speak of the devil, there we go, Kier gonna toss down that fusion core, which is always exciting to see, as I'm someone who goes BCs a lot of my games, personally. Uh, as, as far as uh, my bio goes, I've been trying to practice that more so. So I'm not just as much of a one-trick pony in my StarCraft 2 games. But uh, still, definitely uh, build battle cruisers every now and then. And Kier says, yep, that's a good strategy. So going to make some BCs. He is doing uh, doing the third CC before. So uh, it's not like this is this is uh, the economical battle cruiser rush. It's a little bit greedy in a sense as the Terran, because all you have really is a couple of Hellions, well, four Hellions and then a command center, and then you're going to be building a battle cruiser. so not a lot to defend against any early pressure. This is why Kier is being so vigilant with his Reapers and Hellions poking and prodding, trying to see if there's anything that could be coming his way that he'd need to react to quickly. Sue is starting to get ready for the harassment period of the game, so he throws up the three Spore Crawlers. It's pretty much a must for a Zerg, unless they specifically spot something weird. I don't know what you really would spot, 
as the Zerg. Uh, maybe you'd scout that it's a 2-1-1. Maybe you'd scout, like, a weird double factory play or something. Then you'd be like, okay, there's probably no air units. Otherwise, though, uh, a couple of lings, by the way, get on in. Otherwise, though, yeah, you generally want to uh, throw up those spores as the Zerg. Roach Warren on the way for Sue 2. It is, uh, it is a bit of a later Roach Warren, but that's probably because he's maybe starting to sniff out that this is mech. And so he's going to say, okay, I'll need some roaches potentially here to deal with mech, to deal with lots of hellions and things. The battle cruiser is about to finish up for cure, so we'll see that bad boy probably throw itself across the map. Uh, does it do that? Yes, it does. Where does she get land? There she goes. There she blows as the battle cruiser pops on up behind Sue's base. Hasn't started moving in just yet. We'll see how many drones it's going to be able to get, how much mining it's going to be able to deny. BC comes on in. So far, gets just the one drone. Uh, there's definitely more potential for the battle cruiser to get damage. Oh, so far, not finishing off those drones. Two very injured drones. Uh, here, not micring this BC too, too much. He's focused with these Hellions, trying to find an in, because if these Hellions get in, we'll get a lot more than just a couple of drones. We take a look. Those Hellions still moving out on the map. Then, uh, battle cruiser. Yamato cannon on the way, so this means that Kira is going to go for more than just, say, the 1 BC. He wants to have that extra functionality for the battle cruiser, which I think is fully worth it. If you're building even 2 BCs, get Yamato cannon, because uh, in theory you can get a lot of mileage out of those battle cruisers using the Yamato cannon, teleporting away, being, being that pain that the Zerg player has to deal with. Ten drones have gone down so far. The Hellions are trying to clean up some creep. The Hellions are going to dive in towards the third base. Looks like Kier might commit this time. No, he backs off once again. Wants to keep his Hellions alive as he is mecking, and they are pretty important for having that map control. But man, this battle cruiser up to 16 kills. A lot of damage for one BC. The second one hasn't even shown up yet. It's now flying across the map. Sue's Spire is still 20 seconds away. So this battle cruiser has got a lot of damage done. 17 kills is just terrible for the Zerg. We've seen the Zerg players defend against battle cruiser rushes with very minimal drone losses. Uh, and I think that's actually why the builds seem to have fallen out of the meta a little bit. But uh, still, now it looks like uh, Sue going to have to play a little bit of catch up. He gets some lings into the basic here, but not too many. This battle cruiser is engaging queens, tosses down a Yamato, can always teleport on out. Meanwhile, the other BC is still out on the map. This battle cruiser needs to teleport. No, Cure making a mistake. Oh, losing a battle cruiser. That's a disastrous mistake. I was talking about how Terrans can get tons and tons of mileage out of these BCs, and Cure goes ahead and loses his, loses a fresh BC. That one uh, hadn't really done too much. I mean, it killed like the one or two queens, but it definitely could have stayed alive a lot longer, particularly how Kira's going up to would have been at three BCs. The BCs as well would have been useful for defending against the mutas that Sue's now committed to. And so if if Kira, if Kira hadn't killed those 17 drones, I'd be saying that's not a great start. However, it's, it's a little bit forgivable since he's done so much damage to Sue early on. The BCs are in the main base as well. They dump the Yamato cannon, kill off one of the mutas. That's a guaranteed kill. That's one of the things that makes BCs good at killing mutas, it's, is they can pick them off, make the mutas, or at least make a couple of mutas die every engagement. We now see Hellions run on into Sue's mineral line, gonna kill off another eight drones, keeping the Zerg player from just building units. Sue's having to focus on his economy. This game, he's lost 26 drones, which is no small amount. Uh, Sue is at a pretty healthy worker count. However, he hasn't been at that for a consistent amount of time yet. So we'll see how the next few minutes of the game are going to go. Sue's going to keep harassing with his mutas. He's just going to be investing in missile attack. He's getting up Baneling speed, melee, getting up a fifth base as well, which I love. Sue's floating quite a bit of money that he needs to spend. If you can, always throw up the extra hatchery, the extra command center, the extra nexus. For the most part, in my opinion, because... uh. If that stays alive, it will more than pay for itself in the future. We take a look. There are Cyclones to help defend for Kira as well, being part of his anti-air. Potentially going to be playing that race Carmack as opposed to going for the Thor route. Although it is a very, very mixed bag from Kira right now. We see Liberators, Cyclones, Hellions, Widow Mines on the way here for Kira. 
the Terran player is going to be getting up his fourth base. He's got a very healthy worker count, needs to be able to mine off that efficiently. Widowmine hits a Muta, nicely done for Cure. In come these Mutts, they're going to start attacking this Tech Lab. A pretty nice pickoff, picking off that uh, Magfield Accelerator. That's actually a real nice pickoff there. As uh, Kier's going to have to rebuild that Magfield Accelerator, I think it takes quite a while to, to research, if I'm not mistaken. One of the longer Tech Lab researches. Uh, Yamato Cannon kills a Ravager. Those BCs getting a little bit of value. Of course, there is the big guy, the commander, with his 24 kills. Still doing well. Going to kill off some Creep Tumors. Going to Yamato Cannon, potentially kill off a couple of Mutas. But they just teleport right out of there. The BC is still being a pain. Alright, Sue's out on the map now. He's pretty much maxed out. He's got a very strong Roach Ravager army. We see a lot of timings like this against Terran, however, due to the nature of how the game's gone, Kier's actually almost maxed out too, and as a matter of fact, he is effectively maxed out at this point, so it's just a straight-up fight between these players. Sue's attacking on in. He's trading out pretty well so far, it seems. Liberator's gonna be attacking the Muta's BC's doing what they can. It looks like, though, that Cure's gonna control the skies, and that should be more than enough to send Sue packing, so a nice trade for for Cure, as a matter of fact. Now just gonna be gunning down these Ravagers with his BC's, and uh, just gonna be able to buy himself a minute of respite. He is getting up an extra command center, he can drop lots of mules, he's got a good amount of energy. A good, good amount of energy, so seeing Cure drop ton of mules and maybe build another command center or two would be great to see. Uh, make sure to keep that production going. Of course, if you're playing the race car mech style, having consistent production as mech is very important because the race car mech style is the sort of tradey mech. You trade out cyclones, hellions all the time. Cure though is mainly making tanks right now, so maybe he's thinking of a transition uh, to play a more defensive style of mech which I think is a really good choice because siege tanks are what you want against Ravagers and Roaches against an aggressive Zerg. They're those defensive units. For now, we see Sue. He's scouting out, looking for Cure, potentially trying to take a fifth base. So far, Cure hasn't done that. He knows the risk. He knows the challenges of defending that. He's building up a siege tank count before he even thinks of doing that. We see Corruptors are now on the way for Sue had enough of dealing with these battle cruisers. His muta is definitely not high enough in numbers to take care of this. Sue's looking to push on in towards the third base, pulling SCVs off this location. Battle cruisers dumping Yamato cannon, killing off a couple of mutas, teleporting out, being a pain still, forcing Sue to make these few corruptors. Sue uh, may need to make a few more than that to deal with two BCs. Two BCs definitely beats three corruptors. However, for now, though, Sue is just focused on this big ground attack that he's got. He's keeping the pressure, using the range of that Krosabal to get good pickoffs on the Terran's army. Kier, though, is starting to move on out. He wants to secure up this fifth base. He wants to have this location, which he can drop a ton of mules because he's got so much energy. The second that this base turns into a PF, I want to see mules dropping for days on this base here. We see... Sue's going to be attacking on in, however, there's a lot of siege tanks getting shots off on the Zerg's army, so if Sue's going to make an attack happen, he's going to have to come from another angle. There we go, mules starting to drop on this base. Uh, I, wa I want to see more mules drop for Kier, though. This CC, full energy. Drop drop all those mules. Although I guess Kier does have himself uh, a pretty good bank, so it's not like he's desperate for cash. We take a look. 2-2 two is about done for the Zerg player. The Terran player is heading towards 3-3. Three, three. Corruptors are on the way, spines are on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, we could be on the way to a very long game of StarCraft 2. Mech TVZ, Sue taking on Kier. All right. There's those mules dropping. That's, that's what I like to see, the, ta the fatty Terran mule drop, raising the income on up. However, Sue's still in the lead because he's got 88 drones at a very, very good base spread. We do see, though, Kier's thinking of uh, of trying to do damage to his opponent's economy, which is good to see. These Hellions run on in. However, there is Spines for Sue, which is awesome for Zerg to go for that. I mean, they just really, really help shut down Hellion runbys. These drones are getting toasted up. However, Sue is not like at a teetering point, which losing these 15 drones is going to push him over the edge. He can remake those with ease as he's got himself a very good bank. 
and as long as he does that, he'll be in no trouble. We see Sue's already starting to mine from this rich extractor, which is awesome for the Zerg. Gonna have so, so much gas, such a bank, that it's gonna be a little terrifying for the Terran. Once the Zerg unlocks his full potential, once Sue's getting up to, say, Broodlords, Ultras, he's getting up so, so many upgrades, which is great to see. Here, though, does have himself a pretty good bank. He's just gotta make sure that he's careful in order not to take an atrocious fight. Uh, if the Terran takes an atrocious fight, the Zerg can overwhelm before before the Terran can basically remax. We see now Sue's looking to push on in, dropping Crosa Biles, hit some supply depots and whatnot, just being a pain, not fully committing to an attack just yet though. The BCs still going for Kier are going to be found by these Corruptors, they're going to do the Yamato dump and teleport out. These BCs are showing a lot of value, 133 kills, 115 kills. Very, very good. Good job, Battle Cruisers. Pat on the back for you. We take a look here. He's now going to be moving on in. It's uncomfortable to have a Zerg base this close to you, so the Terran player is going to get aggressive, try and shut this location down. The Zerg, however, is going to attack on in, but uh, it's a risky attack for Sue, that's for sure. Running into a lot of tanks. The Cyclones as well doing work. Not a good trade for the Zerg. Kier's army really just won out there with his 3-2 upgrades, with his better composition. Those Ravagers were just massacred. Not a great fight for Sue. However, he does have that big bank, so he's going to make seven Ultras, which will crash in with a lot more force than those Ravagers did. Kier may even want to secure this base himself at some point. Uh, Sue mined a fair, uh, about 500 of the gas, but that's, that's nothing to consider this early on in a game before things... Uh, potentially before things get super, super late and they're strapped for cash. Who knows, maybe that'll come into effect. But for now, Kier is just going to get this base up. He's cleaning out the creep. He wants to land that base. Uh, probably going to have to kill these tumors. Sue opening up attack pads. Attacking or looking to have uh, windows everywhere. We see he's made some banelings. He's even got his queens on the front, ready to transfuse these ultras. However, it's still tough to attack into a Terran army, but man, Sue is going to try moving th forward into the Thors. The Thor is dealing tons of damage, killing some of the ultras already. The Liberator's in the sky, the tank's shooting hard. This is a very bold attack for Sue, and it's going to be a costly one, that's for sure. He may just be able to repel his Terran his Terran opponent. One of the battle cruisers goes down. The commander is still alive. However, the uh, is he going to stay alive? Yes, he will. The commander BC and Kier pushes Sue back. Sue not taking the best fight there either. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's what what Sue should have gone for. Such a direct attack into an entrenched Terran position. I understand wanting to try and prevent this base getting up, but if we take a look, I mean, maybe it would have been better if Sue say hit the third base of Cure, which did have siege tanks, yes, but it had a lot less there. And, uh, so you always gotta be careful. Y you can't really just run into a Terran mech army with ultras and banelings. Uh, Zergs may have a big bank at this point in the game, but Sue will burn through that bank if he goes for another attack or two like that. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, counterattacking or not attacking the front is probably the best plan I'd see from Sue. Kier, however, he's already maxed out again. He's probably going to want to push this base sometime in the future, and that may be why Sue feels threatened to uh, threatened to position his army and to attack on in, but I don't think he can take another fight, but man, he is going to try. In goes Sue once more. Banelings rolling for it in high quantities. The planetary falls. The Liberator's in the sky dealing a ton of damage, but look at this. The Thors and tanks are going to win out on the ground. And Sue throws away so much supply in order to take that fight. Kier did lose the base, yes. However, what an efficient trade. Pulling up the resources lost. Sue's down 10,000 resources. And in doing so, he's in doing so, he's really, really left this base exposed. Sue doesn't seem to have the best idea of what to do with Kier right now in this game. I mean, he was planning a an attack with the Corruptors, maybe trying to snipe a base, but the turrets are there for Cure. There's also a, was a counterattack with Hellions, killing 13 drones, hurting Sue's economy. Sue all of a sudden is almost out of minerals. He's been building roaches and ultras, and I don't think roaches and ultras are what Sue needs at this point. Now, this is a nice attack from Sue, using any units that he can to get value. Picking off one of Cure's bases here is really nice. No turrets there for Cure. Kind of bit him a little bit. However, uh, good job on Sue 
We're finding a way around for sneaking to a spot. There was no turrets. Getting good value with those corruptors. I'm still just so worried for Sue Man though. He's traded incredibly inefficiently and he's gonna take another fight right now. These some of the tanks weren't sieged. The army of Kira isn't all here, but he's got another PF set up. He's pulling back some of these tanks. And this is just going to be an RA trade once again for Kier. His 3-3 mech is just too efficient. SCVs do need to repair this base. Oh, is Kier act or is yeah, Kier actually loses that base. Good job on Sue for breaking that, but still, that was so so costly for the Zerg. Uh, we take a look. Uh, this one Thor has got his work cut out for him. Going to be trying to kill these corruptors as they are caustic spraying down yet another base. Uh, all the while, there's a fight going on at the front here. Tanks getting picked off. This one Thor <laughs> killing so many Corruptors does end up pushing those Corruptors away. Uh, good repair by the SCVs too. In comes Sue once again. He's got that idea in his head that, hey, maybe I can just kill the Terran now. But if we take a look at the supply, this, the fights that Sue has forced have been have completely battered down both players i mean sue is so broke he's down to 130 supply building roaches against a terran player who's got 150 supply with 3-3 mech tanks thors it's not a good position for sue sue is showing a lot of persistence with these attacks but they really have yet to pay off he's still got this base in the center here he's gonna want to uh Probably get mining gas on that. I know he really just needs minerals at the minute, but maybe Sue should be thinking about building some infestors since he's got such a big gas bank. And I don't think infestors would be bad against all the Thors. Maybe not the best offensively, but uh, he's definitely got the gas to build them. It's just, it's just like, I'm not sure exactly what Sue should make at this point, but I'm not sure if more roaches is the answer as Kier is just locking down this base it's going to be a very critical part of his economy as these players really are starting to mine out. But still, uh, yeah, a little bit worried for Sue in this game. Both players are starting to build up in that supply, but take a look. It's Roaches and Ravagers against Tanks and Thors. Not what I want to see for the Zerg player. And we see Kira, he's scanning this location, includes that base on the right. Just to be like, okay, the Zerg's not mining from that base, so... Uh, he's probably not in that good of a situation. Now we see Neural Parasite. Now we see Burrow starting to research for Sue. So we probably will see some Infestors get made, which is exciting. I think uh, Infestors are probably better than what he's been making so far. I definitely don't think Sue should try and attack into this location again, man. If he does, I'm going to weep. Uh, unless he can catch all the tanks unseized or something. Kira's going to start moving forward. He's going to be looking to take this location, give himself the extra base to secure, which I think is a great spot. If Kier just secures up this base and this one, I think he's going to be in a pretty good spot economically since he's taken such good trades compared to his opponent, even if uh, Sue does have a little bit more fresh bases. Uh, these Thors are in a bit of a risky spot, potentially, potentially to be picked off by Sue. Particularly now that he's gotten festers. <laughs> Look at this army though. Oh man, I'm a little bit worried. Burrow's almost done. Infestors could burrow under this, take over some Thors, and then uh then this is a very big Zerg army. I mean there's Banelings, there's a lot of Ravagers. Sue may just be trying to go for it again, which would be incredibly, incredibly bold. However, who knows? Maybe he can take a fight at this point with the infestors added into his army. His, Sue's army is looking pretty darn big right now, particularly since he doesn't have some of his supply in drones or corruptors as much anymore. He's got a very big ground force, but still, attacking into all these tanks is so risky. A Widowmine hits an infester. A Widowmine uh, doing some work. A Greater Spire is now on the way for Sue. Thinking of getting up uh, Broodlords as his bank is starting to build up again. I think Broodlord and Fester is a very good composition for dealing with mech, if the Zerg player plays it right. Uh, however, it is still a little bit concerning for, for Sue going into Broodlords, because Kier, he's got nine Thors, and Thors can just really power through Broodlords. We see the Terran player is starting to get aggressive, but oh, take a look at that. A nice Neural Parasite on some tanks, on some Thors. This could be a good fight for Sue, and it looks like it is. Those Thors and tanks being complete traitors to the Terran army. I mean, uh, still looks like an okay trade for Kier. 
seeing as how his army is just so strong, his units are so strong, but uh, an RA trade, I guess, everything considered for Sue. Resources lost, he's still down 12,000 though, which is just too much, I think, for you to win a game. It's gonna be darn close. Kier getting this base up is gonna give him the money, I feel, that he'll need to close this game out, even if Sue mines this base out and this base. Uh, it's, it's still quite concerning for the Zerg player. I'm not sure what Sue should be making. I mean, he did kill off six of the Thors there, as a matter of fact, which could really lead him into, uh, into having effective Broodlords. Here, though, is now starting to be aggressive. He says, hey, you traded off a lot of your ground army. So I'm going to bully you with tanks and hellbats. And I'm not sure that there's much Sue's going to be able to do to stop this attack. This is why we see him frantically morphing 12 Broodlords, which are going to be what he's going to have to use to stop this Terran army. Uh, there's absolutely no Corruptors to guard these, those, so the Liberators could actually start dealing damage to those. And there's uh, three Liberators, a couple more building. Uh, I'm not sure if Kyr saw these Broodlords, though. I mean, he's scanned, so he definitely has seen them now. We see Thor production pick up again. He's making Liberators. He might even want to make some Vikings, as this could be one of those situations where the Zerg goes too hard on the Broodlords that he doesn't actually have many Corruptors. So for Sue, it's good to see the fact that he is making eight Corruptors to help defend in this to defend these Broodlords. Broodlords, pardon me. Ah, oh, the the caster Rust. But uh, yeah, it is uh, it is a bit of a scary situation right now for Cure. He's got a good bank. But this army of Sue requires the right composition from the Terran to deal with. 12 Broodlords is no small number. There's Infestors underneath. We see there's not that much anti-air. If these Thors get neural parasited, it'll just be a disaster for the Terran player. He doesn't have any Vikings to help out. He's making three more Thors at a time, but they are not here to help out right now. The Broodlords are trying to tag the Thors, use their range to get some damage done. Looks like Kier is able to draw a line in the sand, though. All the while, there's a tank, Hellbat, counterattack. Gonna be killing off the Greater Spire of Sue. That's a real nice pickoff. It means essentially no more Broodlords in the immediate future. Sue's turning around. He knows he's got to deal with these tanks. He knows he's got to deal with this counterattack before it kills his hive. His spawning pool is infestation pit. Losing the Greater Spire is already a big, big pain for the Zerg, particularly now that Kier's counterattacking. He's gonna be moving on him. And while Sue seemed to show some promise at the end so far, I'm worried about how he's going to win this game. The Terran army is just looking real strong. Kyr's now had time to make the extra Thors he needs to deal with the Broodlords. It's going to have to be a very, very good fight. Look at this. These tanks are set up, even shooting some of the Infestors there. Uh, the Broodlords will come to clean them up, but that basically just says to Kyr, Hey, yeah... It these units don't have to worry, the Broodlords are ages away. And thus we see Kyr cleaning up these two bases, really hurting the economy of his opponent, while Kyr's just mining happily, happily over here, even making some Vikings to help deal with the Broodlord threat. He knows Sue's economy is almost non-existent at this point in the game. So yeah, this is looking really, really promising for Kier to close this one out. He's got the Liberators. He's going to be taking a fight right now. The Infestors abduct or Neuroparasite a couple of the Thors. Uh, but look at this. The Thors just deal so much damage to the Ravagers. Sue was fighting without the Broodlords there. One or two of the Broodlords is sort of straying in. But we do see that slow, slow Broodlord army moving on in. But Kier can just back off. He can just back off. Go home. Pull some SCVs. Repair these Thors make some more Thors, maybe make some Vikings, and uh, just take an R.A. fight and he should have this game. These Thors are a little bit exposed, but yeah, I think this is going to be all that Kier needs. The Thors dealing good damage to the Broodlords, the Broodlords, uh, I mean, they're going to pick off the Thors with the help of the Roaches and the Queens, but the Liberators in the skies are even going to help kill off some of these Broodlords, and there's just not much left at all. For Sue. He's down to 100 supply. Kier's still got himself a bank. He's still got himself a good income. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been an epic TVZ, so make sure to hit that like button. I know uh, I know that it's not over just yet, but boy is it ever looking good for good for Kier. Uh, I think it just went wrong at the start for Sue with those fights. 
Like it really took a lot of the longevity he had in this game away from him because he'd spent he spent so so many resources trying to kill Cure. I think he really would have been better off, say, hitting like the third base if he if it was exposed enough. Uh, I'm not sure what else Sue should have done to beat this. Cure played a very solid mech game, really played the game that he wanted to, and Sue kind of played into his hand in that sense. Sue trying to get up this hatchery, but. It's, it's not even going to be cancelled, it's probably just going to die. The Liberator's set up for Cure, the Thors are enough. GG, Cure takes the game. So as I said before, ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you haven't. Join the Discord, which is linked in the description down below. And consider becoming a member if you do want to get various perks on the channel. That is by pressing the join button or using the link in the description. This has been Laughing Games. I'll see you next time.